Kevin, how are you, buddy? Okay, so Dixie was not able to take out the low. Uh, we'll see what happens, uh, you know, on a weekly basis. It's trying, you know, it's a inside week. The off numbers here, so uh 92.29 so we're trading about 30 above it you know i bottom picked it around 35 i've had little inter intermittent rallies i'm just going to leave my stop at 91.80 on this there are a couple of uh, instruments right here that are good or bad from last night's lows um i'd say the anis at 78.6. So if it could start to turn up here and start closing back over 104 and a half, that's going to look pretty good. But underneath 78.6, look out. But I give it a chance. And you know what was unusual is when the yen was under pressure, that gold did not make any hay out of it. And if the yen's going to turn up from here, uh, the gold's in trouble. For those of you that want higher gold, um, you're going to have to root for a lower yen, U.S. dollar yen, because when a market doesn't make hay when it should have, while the yen was sliding all week, right? Uh, gold really didn't take advantage of that tailwind. So if markets can't act good in a tailwind, what's going to happen with a headwind, right? If you understand what I'm saying, give me a why. Okay. Um, and something else that's good or bad from right here is Euro pound. And this rally that we had after they shook out all the longs down here, pulled all the way back to 61.8, it's trying. If we get back over this little down channel here, looks like it's going to come in like around 89.80. And more than that, this wedge line up here comes in around 89.90. If that happens, you, you know, you have a chance for a decent bull move up to the wedge line, which is coincidentally up here at uh, 92. I know someone that likes that 92 number. So these are good or bad from last night's low, the yen and EG. Okay, uh, Kuldeep, uh, uh, why don't you ask Steve about it? In a little while, he's been covering the Turkish lira. Uh, we're covering Turkey in November because of Thanksgiving. So Turkey's on our radar. Do you like the drumstick? Uh, okay. Um, this, I think, is significant. You know, that I talked about the off number in NASDAQ was 12,130. And this day it got up to um, 12,094, missed a two week off number by 40. To me, it looks like we have a trend break here. All right. Um, I would sell rips. Go a little shorter term. You know, if we had a rally back up towards uh, these lows, you know, or 1940, and S&P's uh, even clearer. I don't know if we're gonna, going to be able to, but let me get you guys out of the way for a minute. If you just look at these, this is where we accelerated to the downside yesterday, right here, 3590-ish. So if we could rally back up to 3590, uh, I think it's a sale. This could end up being a negative week. Um, unlike the NASDAQ where the off number was above the market in S&Ps, it's underneath the market and it's this candle's close of 3517. So, you know, uh, it's doable, right? 3517 is where we had all these lows here, 3520. So it's a coinkadink uh, that, 
you know, that's our off number for this week. Sometimes it'll act as, uh, uh, you know, there'll be, there might be a bounce from there. But to me, this looks like a rollover as well in S&Ps. I think yesterday was a key day in S&Ps and you sell rips. And if you're not a futures trader and you're, you're looking for an ETF that's been around for a while, doesn't have a lot of erosion like a lot of the bearish ETFs, uh, take a look at quid. Okay, so I think it's two times. It's not a triple leverage, it's double leverage. But look at this uh, falling wedge that we have here near the bottom and the divergences that we have here uh, when NASDAQ tried to make a new high a week ago. And, you know, we're still at the bottom of the wedge. So you could like buy a thousand shares and risk a buck. You don't probably don't even have to risk a buck. You risk a grand. And if we get the kind of action I think is possible in NASDAQ, we should get a breakout over 970. And when you look at it on a daily basis, um, 12 to 14 is possible on a breakout over 970. Your risk isn't bad. And look at the divergence on the daily. It's very glaring. So we've been diverging since September. Okay, and it is a three drive. Here's two, here's three. And if I really wanna, you really want a big picture and this would take, you know, a huge meltdown would be, you know, they're just dots and on the weekly look how long, I know you really can't position yourself on weekly, but now we're starting to get, yeah, SQQ, yeah. And anyway, I think they look good. So this moving average comes in at 15. So, you know, just an instrument for those of you uh, where, you know, you can't handle the leverage of NASDAQ. Uh, you know, S&Ps has micros now, so you, you don't have to do that. But I, I, does uh, NASDAQ have micros, the NASDAQ 100? I know the S&P went from, it has a mini and a micro. Not sure about NASDAQ, but yeah, okay. Anyway, this was a close here yesterday. So uh, something to think about if you're bearish in NASDAQ without risking the whole farm, you know, you don't have to risk the farm to be there for a correction. And why can't we correct 15, 20% from here in both S&Ps and NASDAQ? Anyway, I think this trend break is significant. And this, you know, all we did was get to 61.8 here in the NASDAQ. And the S&P was stronger for a while. It got up to 78.6. So I think we're topping in this kind of fashion. And this could be uh, a C. Okay. And I think minimum targets are around 34 and a half on this. So I like selling rips. Uh, for the rest of the week, let's see how this works, works out or doesn't work out. Any questions on anything I presented to you guys? You know, our mission is to build up and edify traders every day. We leave it all on the court for you guys. Okay. So we'll see what Blake is thinking here now. Uh, Blake actually uh, showed the Dow um, showing some divergence. The Dow's been outperforming on the chart of the day. Uh, Dow's been outperforming NASDAQ and S&Ps on this recent uh, recovery in the market. You know, they're going to things that have been depressed. So um, what do you think? Uh, uh, what's it going to take on that chart of the day, Blake, for it to turn negative? Hey, Coach, can you hear me? Hey, got you, buddy. All right. Um, you know, uh, just, you know, looking at the Dow. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, I'm trying to, I'm trying to look at all the markets together. So it's not just, right. you know, just the Dow, but I, I mean, I, I think it's pretty clear that, you know, below that, like 28, eight or so, I mean, that, yeah, that's, that's a pretty clear, like, oh, oh crap, I got to be real careful with being long again, you know, like yeah. maybe, it, I guess it's maybe a little bit higher than that. It's, 28, 
28,900. Yeah. I think that's, that's the level where you got to go. Okay. Um, you know, maybe it's, it's over near term, you know what I mean? Right. And obviously you, you want to, you want to be paying attention to the other markets too, because the S and P is, you know, just kind of dragging lower here. And then, you know, obviously the NASDAQ as well. So, uh, but I, but I think that, that, that the, 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 um, the Dow has kind of gone unnoticed by a lot of people. I think, you know, everybody's focused on the S and P and everybody's focused right. on the NASDAQ, but you know, the Dow, I, I mean, it clearly shows you that it's struggling up here at, at, at the previous all time highs. So, um, and that, that should be, um, you know, I'd see what you're seeing here too, uh, Blake, this, uh, daily divergence, uh, yeah. Four hour divergence right here yeah. at this high. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, gaps underneath know. it. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, I think there's are, there, there are risks now, um, to this, you know, to this, to this, uh, to this market and it's, you know, we, can we see, you know, the big caps roll over and, 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 and some of the other ones be supported, maybe like the Russell or, or something. Yes, you could, but you know, the big caps are, you know, the biggest, companies basically not not all of the biggest companies but you know it's it's the marquee players in the market right. so you know when those are um you know those, those are under pressure then you know th then we have to really you know, take notice so anyway you know i was just I, I was just uh also tweeting really quick uh dale is uh you know i was just tweeting about what's what's happening with um trump and he's, you know, they, they have a press conference today with attorneys and, you know, the bottom line is he isn't going away. And, and, uh, and wait, there was, hold on. I got, I got to tell you, uh, there was, um, hold on. Uh, there's just a Trump didn't do anything against Iran. So Israel struck some targets in Syria, Iranian targets. So, hold on. So, hold on. There was, um, here we go. The, in, in 1876, there was, uh, I, th I think that was the election that there was two inaugurations happening at the same time. Yes, right here. Uh, okay, so um, the, the Hayes and, Hayes and Tilden. So the, you had two concurrent inaugurations happening at the same time. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So the the crazy thing is, I, I, I and I tweeted it and kind of jokingly, like, you know, we might actually have, end up having like two inauguration ceremonies. We we could end up having that. And I, I'm half joking, but I'm half not. You know what I mean? Like, no, I don't remember that for Excel. I was only a baby. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I thought you were in college back then, Dale. Uh, it was, you know, now, uh, crawling, um, crawling. But, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm half joking, but I'm half not joking. Y you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really wondering because I don't think he's giving up, and I don't think he, you know, uh, and, no. and you know, a lot of people, a lot of people believe he shouldn't, and so. 70% of Republicans believe it was a fraudulent victory, uh, illegitimate for uh, Joe Biden. So, th so there you go. So wh why couldn't there be, you know, two yeah. inauguration ceremonies where, you know, Trump's like, I'm not, I'm not the loser. And then, you know, Biden's like, you're not the winner. And then we go into a constitutional crisis. Right. What was the outcome of the, 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 that one that you're showing? Uh, between Garfield and Tilden, what ended uh, up happening? Well, uh, well, Garfield was ended up being president. No, it wasn't um, Garfield. It was um, it was uh, 
um, um, his Hayes. opponent. Oh, Hayes, Hayes yeah, Hayes. Uh, and I, and I Hayes it, had, and it's similar. Look at that, Blake. He had yeah. less popular vote, just like Trump. Yeah. Um, and he only won the electoral vote by one. Right. That's a little different, but yeah, he, he didn't win the popular vote. So, so, huh? I, I, I'm, I'm just saying, man. I think that we need to be a little careful, and I, um, I'm. I'm kind of worried that we might go into some sort of constitutional crisis where we don't know who's president. And I don't know if the markets are going to, I think as we get closer, markets are going to start to get a little worried, especially if, the, if, if, if Trump doesn't go away, if he doesn't concede, you know, He's the longer he drags concede. us out, the more it's going to start to weigh on the markets, you know, markets are going to start going, Hey, Hey, wait a second. Um, and that's why we need to be a little careful with risk. I mean, right. you know, we, we obviously have the S and P and I'm going to, I'm just going to, um, here, grab wrong chart actually. So we obviously have the, um, megaphone pattern, which you guys all know, right. Yeah. Right. And, you know, we, we're all obviously also putting in a false breakout too, which, is a risk. And so if we start, you know, drifting below like 3,500, I think the risk is that the markets start to feel a little bit of heat. And, um, you know, if, if, the, if the stock market feels a little bit of heat and we start to see a little sell-off come in, then what do you do? You know, what do you do with, uh, what, what do you do in FX? And my, my opinion is you have to start, you know, looking at these commodity currencies that look a little vulnerable. One of them's, uh, you know, obviously the Kiwi had a failed breakout attempt. I think we can buy dips uh, to 68 cents, but, you know, it, it's still above 68 cents, but if we drop below 68 cents, it's over for the, for the Kiwi. And the Aussie looks a little timid here. It's even, even on a, on a better um, uh, uh, jobs number overnight, you know, we still saw the and, and it was a really strong australian um jobs number we saw the aussie slip you know so I, I think that we have to like i said i think we have to be extremely cautious and careful at the, this point um and we could end up seeing you know some some dollar strength especially against some of these commodity currencies if these risks presidential risk persist uh you know you know do do i think we're going to get a vaccine yes do i think we're going to get stimulus stimulus eventually yes um but that doesn't mean that in the near term we can't get a hiccup and this is you know possibly a hiccup right so let's uh let's take a look at let's take a look at the s p and let's kind of just you know put up our our bias chart um uh levels and and by, by the way, Dale, did, or I was just going to ask you, Dale, does it, does what I'm saying, does it make sense a little bit or? You know? I, I didn't know about the uh, historical analog. I find it uh, very interesting. Yeah, I, isn't it? I must I mean, have missed but, uh, class that day, history class. <laughs> but that was obviously a, uh, that was pre. After the Civil War? That was it. <laughs> yeah. Country I mean, still divided um, like now. Yeah, I mean, it's it's obviously not in the information age. And I mean, you know, yeah. you have people running around thinking they won and I won. And, you know, I mean, you know, who knows? I yeah. mean, it's, it, it's a different day and age. Like today we should be able to go, okay, you, you, the, the vote was, you know, it was a definitive win, you know, but obviously that's not happening. So, um, and that's where, that's where it gets so like, holy cow, I can't believe we're dealing with this right now type of yeah, situation. No one can. It's surreal. Right. It is a little surreal. Okay. So um, we are back in a range after being bullish yesterday and the day before being above 3,600, the move below 3,600 um, obviously uh, brought on a little bit of selling. So now you can see this previous trend line here. That trend line is going to come in right around you know, these lows here, which will be 3515. I think we got to watch that for support. Do I think we're going there today? Probably not. But, um, you know, could we? Sure. You know, we, we could. Cable. 
Um, we're getting a Brexit deal next week. That's what I that's what I keep hearing. So we stalled at the 133 level. And, you know, we, we had uh, Benedict in our chat room and a few other traders. I think Amanda was uh, just shorting the, the cable yesterday around the 133 level. You know, if you if you use Forex analytics, you know, uh, I actually put in the update um, right here, the, the, the pound dollars at horizontal resistance. Uh, a break above would put the 133.65 level in play, but we can never break above. And um, since then we started, we started sliding. So now we, we, we have to mark up that resistance, but also what we should do, get rid of this. You think there's a one buy stop above yesterday's high? There might be, but I don't know if we're going to get to it. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I know. Yeah, this is the 50% retracement. What's yeah. that? Yeah, maybe not immediately, but, you know, I, I, the algos are probably yeah, eyeing depends. that later, you know? It depends what equities do. I mean, you know, and, and I mean, if it's absent of any news, yeah, Brexit news, yeah, yeah, I think it would be a false breakout if it, if it actually got there. Right. That's you know? what I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I'm going to write down 13310. Whoops. Support 618 right here. That's also a previous hourly high. You can see it right there. Hourly low right there. Uh, 13180. So that should probably offer us some support on dips. Okay. Uh, like you put the S&P in the euro dollar uh, column. I didn't. Oh, I did. Oh my gosh, I did. What was I thinking? Uh, thank you. Oh, I'm timers. thinking it's it's still early in the morning here. And um, yeah. oh come on, you get an extra hour of sleep now. I know I do. Actually, it doesn't wash anymore, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that extra hour makes a big. Difference. I'm so envious. All right. I'll be it really back is. It's my, my five months of bliss. <laughs> uh, uh, and it's cool out. I mean, you know, you're in Nirvana now. Yeah. So, uh, sorry. Let's go over to the euro. Okay. So, here's the euro. Um, you know, uh, yesterday I was selling the euro in the 118.60s, and uh, I, I'm still short. It's just we're holding a 50% retracement. I, I do think that we're going to eventually make it down to, you know, the 117.60, which, by the way, is the 50% retracement of this. If you, if you don't know, it's a 50% of that move. But we have, you know, obviously some work to do. And, and the euro is very, very slow moving at the moment. So intraday support will be 118.15. Below that is 118. So I, I, I'm, I'm more concerned with 118 support because that's the 618 um, resistance. You know, any move back up now to 118.75 should find sellers. Oops. Okay. Um, Aussie dollar. So, like I said, the Aussie, good jobs report, great jobs report, actually. Aussie slipped. Um, so, Where do we go from here? Well, I, I think we have to write down the the, the same 7340. By the way, I had an order to sell. I, I was waiting for a good jobs number. I thought it was going to be a good jobs number. I had an order to sell at uh, 7349. I was just hoping it was going to take out the stops above the highs and I was going to short it. Obviously, I never made it. So um, now we're just dealing with the... This is the previous high, the 72. 40, but we probably need to pay attention to the 7220 now. So and we are range bound. Kiwi is still bullish. Um, I, I think we have an, an ascending channel now. And so dips to the 6840 should find support. And 69.50 should be resistance or 69.40. Whoops, 69.40. And Kiwi's still bullish. 
Um, do I think that the Kiwi's at risk of pulling back? Yes, I do. I, that's why I drew this red out here if you haven't seen it. Um, and uh, I know I know some traders that were in our chat room that was shorting it yesterday. So, uh, and Amanda, uh, she shorted it at 69.35 or something because this is the 127% extension, uh, this move. And I know there was, I, I followed her on the short side there uh, with a little, and I know some other traders did too. So it was a uh, really nice little move low lower from there okay um but we'll have to watch you know these support levels as we come down towards 6840 in my opinion um dollar canadian okay so the dollar canadian had a really nice bounce yesterday we had a if, if you look at the daily candle we had a pin bar false breakdown that was a clear indication that we were going to bounce and we have so now we have to pay attention to uh, 131.20 and definitely 131.75. So I'm gonna mark both those areas up. 131.20, 131.75. And um, I think you gotta try to try to buy dips below, you know, like if we can get a move like yesterday, where it's a little false breakdown, like you saw here, I think that a move to like, you know, 130, 70, maybe 130, 65, that would be great if you can get a move like that. And you might. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to write that down. Okay. Hold on, I got people in the chat room yammering at me that we got data. Oh, oh, we do, we have Canadian data. Two minutes though, not now. Yeah, you're slacking. You know, this is big data. You gotta actually give me more than just one minute. Whatever. I mean, it's telling us you just can't do anything right. I mean, I don't know. It's my, uh, what my, my ex-wife used to tell me that. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Um, is is uh, let, me, let me let me see. I'm gonna get. Uh, I'm a lot prettier than your ex-wife. I'm just telling you. Just, <laughs> just yeah. saying. I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, let's talk. Let's talk Mexican peso really quick uh, for a minute. So the dollar max again holding it, it. I guess the thing about the dollar Mexican peso is it's it's holding lows and it's making a higher low, which is good. Um, we might be, you know, carving out a, a lower high too here, but I think if we can get above like 2050, then we can challenge this 2085, but I'm going to write down in the dollar Mexican peso 20, oops, 0300, 20.84. It's still, and I mean, we should actually really be bearish here. I mean, we really, uh, uh, we, we should, but the thing I'm most worried about and the reason why it's, we've, we've had it at neutral is because it, we did a false breakdown below these lows. So I don't know, this is, this is questionable right here. All right, let's go back to the Canadian with the data. Uh, do, 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 do minute chart we'll keep it on one minute chart let's pull up data flash okay here's bloomberg let me uh, make some adjustments here uh, whoa, whoa. ADP right here, so. I think this is new. That's why we don't have any historical data on it. Hey, we were faster. Yeah, look at that, on jobless claims? Yep. And this ADP data, 
I what what ADP? I don't see it. It's right here. ADP payrolls data. That mm. is new. And the dollar Canadian is oh the ca the Canadian one you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know yeah. we don't have it on Data Flash, but it's I saw it in a couple different spots today. Yeah. So. Uh, it, I think it's new. I think it's a new piece of data, actually. I, I, I've seen it. I think it's been there for a few months. I've seen it before, I'm sure. Um, Philly Fed's still not out. Anyway, not really that it's going to move anything, but... One thing we can get a move... We, we could get some Canadian movement if uh, we could figure out what this ADP data is. Nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Nothing yet. Okay. Just like our, our friend DJ saying, eh, 742,000 unless you're jobless claims. Meh. It's funny how we dismiss like, you know, practically nearly a million of uh, new unemployed people every week. Yeah, it's nothing. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's a few hundred thousand here or there. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I tended to see more homeless people around my neck of the woods, you know. Eh, that's not me, right? Poor that. More lately, uh, has it increased, Blake? Yeah, that's just because the weather is really nice here right now. Yeah. <laughs> they, they all migrate, right? And, and like, yes, I, I know you were sarcastic, DJ. Don't worry. I know you, I know you were. We no, are no, as well. but, uh, but um, you know, Dale, just to answer your question, yes, because it the what this is the time of year where we have a lot of homeless people. Uh, they make their way to Arizona to uh, to the Phoenix area um, yeah. during this because you can they can sleep outside all year long and it's nice I, I, to an extent, obviously. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Something I'm hoping uh, none of us ever have to witness other than being in a campground. Okay, let's, uh, g let's continue on with this analysis. Um, let's see. And somebody let me know if they, they, uh, the data comes out for Canada. If, if you guys see it, because I'm going to do analysis and I'm not paying attention. So uh, let's take a look at the Swissy. So here's a Swissy. Um, uh, yeah, uh, same as as we same as what we've been dealing with, right? Ninety one uh, cents of support resistance now is this this trend line. So I I, I know ninety one eighty five is big, but even intraday ninety one sixty five is going to be something. Oops. Um, so we're gonna write it down. Not like it's a big deal, but, and I should actually write 90, 90, because I keep writing down 91 cents, but it's, it's actually 90, 90 right here. You know, if you want to be like a little granular on that analysis, you know, and, and I am paying a little bit more attention to the dollar Swiss nowadays, not because of the dollar Swiss, I'm, I'm, I'm more paying attention to the Euro Swiss, just so you guys know. I'm 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 actually starting to uh, um, get some Why? feelings about the give you, uh, Is it kind of a market tell for other things? Well, Blake, is that it, why? It, it is. Um, it, it is, and and it was my chart of the day from a couple of days ago. So if you okay. if you're interested in my thoughts on the Euro Swiss, it's that's it. That's there. Okay. Um, I'm gonna uh, our, fr our friend Ayman is saying minus 79.5 ADP non-farm minus 240 was expected. So it so did come less, out? Less negative, so good. Let's see here. I, I don't see it on, uh, on investing.com. I don't know if you see it. I don't know. I don't even see it on Bloomberg. Anyway, that's what uh, one of our friends is writing. We have a lot of friends in here today. Yep. A Forex factory, okay. God, I would hate to work in a Forex factory. What do you do? You, are you in this? <laughs> <laughs> US dollar Norwegian Krona. We, we, uh, we held um, the 896 level. Uh, yesterday we dipped to 898 
and uh, we held it, but we're still trading pretty heavy here. So you'd have to get above 920 in order for it to change anything. So 896. Hmm. 920. We're in a range. Um, making my way down here. We did the S and P. Uh, let's go over to the dollar yen. So the dollar yen. Um, one of the traders in our chat room actually picked up some. Was started pick up yesterday. Uh, I think Richard was picking up dollar yen below one hundred three eighty. Really, really good um, price. I, I mean, I know we yeah. we had this uh, this this. Whoops, not that seventy eight six. We had, is this seventy eight six? But <sighs> back to the breakout. Trade. Yeah. We had this trend line here, um, you know, also. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's like, like back to the breakout point. And, and it's technically it made sense. Uh, the dollar yen still just doesn't make any sense to me as a trade. You know, like the guys in my office are very much trading it in a different fashion. It still does. It's not registering with my point of view. So I'm having a difficult time wrapping my mind around why I want to trade the dollar yen and I, I it really has to be at a key level support or resistance for me to do anything but that also means that um you know if if like if we get back up here Could like, be a uh, sell. to, to yeah. one oh yeah to one oh four forty it might be a sell I don't know why 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 but um but it doesn't really matter right if if it's at resistance and you just want to short it then so be it uh so support's going to be 103.70, resistance 104, 104.40, 103.70. It's just tightening up a little bit. Dollar index, as Dale, you pointed out, um, didn't make a new low. And actually, the dollar index is moving right now a little bit. So um, I still think that 9310 is going to be resistance support is 9210 and I think that's what we wrote down yesterday if I'm not yeah if I'm not mistaken I I could go back and find out because Stelios is always so good at posting the stuff in our chat room here's our chat room guys uh, let's see these uh you can see there's been a lot of a lot of talking um, this is where I got up. I got up right here. Good morning, everyone. Oh, that's when I got, I mean, in front of the computer with everything turned on. This is how much chatting has gone on since then. Okay. So as you can see, it's a pretty active community. That's uh, if you want to be part of this community, make sure you try out Forex Analytics. So this is yesterday. This is the bias chart. Stelios posted it. Um, thank you, Stel, by the way. So let's see. You're welcome. Oh, here. That's I wanted to do this. So yesterday, 92.10, 93.10. Yep, that's right what we put in. Okay. So let's take a look at gold. And let me get rid of the chat room. Metals are getting smashed, by the way. Ooh, 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 Have you ever seen the um, Coming to America? Yep. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. One, one of my best movies. <laughs> one of the best comedies ever made. This is so funny. Hey, Steve, good morning. I mean, it's seriously. Good morning. It's, it's I, absolutely, if, probably somebody... Eddie Murphy's best. If it it definitely me. was. No, no, no. Trading places. Come on. You trading can't, you can't beat that. Yeah. As a market person, it, trading places is good. But I, 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 I love it. Look, here we are. 1850. Getting close. By the way, this is a bear flag pattern. You guys see it, right? Let's make sure everybody sees it. Let me, let me make sure. I, let's do this. Ooh, no, no, no. I didn't want to do that. Of course, you do realize that political correctness would never allow such a sin nowadays, right? Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. But it is not still... once in a million. No, but it's still so funny. It is. Okay. So the bear flag, just so you know, points to 
one seventeen eighty four. I don't. I'm not a big um, flag person when the flag exceeds the <laughs> the flag pole, but I think that um, by more than fifty percent. Like if you look at the daily chart, it barely does. So you know, I think we. It, I think this is so capable because of how bullish the market is on gold right now. So that's why I think it's it's actually doable. You know, that bullishness is not reflected in DSI. I mean, we've been in the 30s, 40s in gold for a long time. Yeah, you're right. You know, you know I, that's I, that? I, yeah. And, you know, and that's made me a little cautious about shorting it because um, there isn't a lot of bullishness right now. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm just I writing mean, down. Yeah, people bullish. are bullish, but DSI is, you know, what I use for center. I have a I have a uh, I have an, an absolutely uh, uh, certain way to avoid sorting precious metals <laughs> whenever I get the urge I yeah, just have you? a look at central bank's balance sheet and it immediately goes away <laughs> yeah. all right Steve well hey uh good morning by the way guys I'm gonna good leave morning. you with uh with this and uh l- let me mention that if you really want to be part of the forex analytics community Go to the Forex sponsored page, especially if you're not in the U.S. or Canada, and um, and open a Pepperstone account. You have to use this link here. If you open a Pepperstone account, a live trading account, you can get uh, two plus two, two months free, and then plus two months once you trade five standard lots, which is very minimal. So um, uh, try it out. And uh, guys, I'm going to pass it over to you now. Blake, can you please put up the chart again? The uh, I didn't have the time the to bias. look. Bias. Nope. Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Oh, here it is. Okay. Hold on a second. And he's so done. lazy. Thank you. Blake. Smile, oh, smile, bias chart. <laughs> I got it. All right. All right. Thank you, Dad. Joke. I, I appreciate you. Um, have a great one, uh, guys you and too, gals. Blake. I'll see you. I'll see you on the daily roundup webinar, which is for Forex Analytics subscribers. So I'll see you guys in four hours' time. Thank uh, you, Blake. Rest of you, I'll see you tomorrow. All right. See you. Thank Bye-bye, you very Blake. much. Thank you. Bye. Okay. So Blake mentioned quite a few things. We're still in, um, unfortunately, wait, 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 wait. I mentioned quite a few things. Double inauguration. That's the most important Double thing. Double inauguration. Okay. Yes. Sorry. I'm going to let you guys go. All right. Bye. <laughs> bye. So we're still in wait and see mode. We wait and see what happens with the US elections. We wait and see for Brexit. Uh, wait and see for COVID vaccines. It's all it's a the bit, name uh, of the game for everything, Stelio. Yeah, and uh, you know, I'm finding myself doing very little. In fact, I got out of my last bit of uh, Euro Norway short today. Um, this particular piece was actually out of the money, but all the ads I'd done over the past what six, six, eight months, so they they'd done very well. So overall, it was good. But I'm out of that, so I have very little now. I'm still waiting for silver to get to twenty one. 21 and a half, somewhere there, it will depend on price action to get long again. And I think that will be a gift if we can get there. And obviously, I'm going to be reshorting Norway pairs uh, on spikes. Um, so, uh, risk today, we were a little bit um, uh, in the beginning of the day, overnight, and um, uh, uh, Asian trading equities were lower, a little bit nervous, but we're back to almost unchanged. So, you know, let's see how that goes. But there clearly are still quite a few risks um, with the uh, the markets. Uh, I was reading... Um, the biggest of which is getting a vaccine, actually. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm uh, not kidding. Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> I'm very serious about it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to be first to get it, that's for sure. Um, uh, I was reading United... Is it, was it United Airlines who are saying they're seeing a significant drop in online bookings? Who and, would have uh, expected that? Well, yeah, you know, the, the, the market always likes to assume the, the hockey stick um, uh, recovery, always. There is no, um, there's no hiccup anywhere. But, uh, you know, I, I agree. I think in the long run, obviously, things are going to get better. But I just think too many, too many questions at the moment, too many potential dangers for markets to be, well, near all-time highs. Um, so, Steve, why are you worried about the vaccine? No, I, I mean, the markets are worried about the vaccine. Oh, okay. Would you, because, uh, if you know, it was available today, would you take it? Would you get it? No, 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 no. Why? No. Because I, I'm, a very, I'm very low risk uh, part of the okay. population. Yeah. I don't have any underlying issues. I'm 40 years old. 
Um, so I'm pretty sure that there, is a there will be a higher chance for the vaccine to give me uh, bigger side effects than the disease itself. Okay. I think it depends uh, on your circumstances. You know, I have uh, of course. I have my parents in the same house who are obviously a lot older, but we are basically locked down. So I'd rather be in lockdown for three more months and see how things go than uh, be right. the first to get it. But anyway, I yeah. think it's a, it's a personal choice and depends on your circumstances. Of course, so, of course. Okay. I mean, if you I could, was old, how about if you were me? What should I do? If I were you, I'd uh, move to Greece. You come stay yeah. with us, lock down for three months, and then we see. <laughs> That's a great idea. Actually. Yep. But you guys wouldn't take me. But no Americans <laughs> still, right? I don't know, actually. I don't know. Yeah, I think it still is that way. Maybe. Don't worry. Spring. We're going to keep you locked down in the basement for a couple of weeks. <laughs> uh, I'm used to that. I was very <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, right. Yeah, so um, otherwise, uh, it's been relatively quiet. We had the huge um, Australian uh, sorry employment print. We're expecting small negative, and it came in plus hundred, nearly hundred eighty thousand. That was a big print, but the Aussie just didn't do anything. So it just shows you economic data used to be you know the number one thing that we were all looking at now it's uh, logically speaking i mean that, yeah, that made sense <laughs> now it's less relevant because we have so many question marks like we said you know it's a, a headline can move you know the aussie and the dollar and risk uh, assets massively while a, a, an actual number you know like unemployment or employment in this case um isn't so um, it's it's because they, we've talked about it the markets currently are moving based on you know one uh, you know, a reason mostly, and that's extremely loose yeah. monetary policy and stimulus and expectations of a lot of fiscal uh, stimulus as well, which of course is going to come from more monetary policy because nobody wants to buy these bonds. I mean, you know, they're going to be immediately monetized uh, by central banks. So, you know, as long as the market is looking forward to uh, you know, stimulus and more stimulus and more stimulus, they don't care about economic data. That's why I believe it's extremely likely that once we start seeing, you know, the light in the tunnel, uh, the markets are going to start getting really worried that, uh, you know, the stimulus, um, at, at least the pace of stimulus is going to decrease. And, you know, we, we might have a day of reckoning then. But until that happens... I think the markets are just, you know, yeah. moving in one direction. And I don't consider it, a, a, you know, a coincidence that now that we get closer to perhaps that day, the markets start getting a little bit jittery. Although I, you know, I don't think we, we've seen anything like a reversal or whatever. Yeah. I, I think if you, uh, if you overlay the chart of, uh, you know, the, um, the Federal Reserve uh, balance sheet and indices, equity indices, there's a very good correlation. But Yes, a lot, a that's lot of why people... I think we're going to explode higher because don't forget we, we have a lot of fiscal stimulus coming and that will all have to be monetized. So I was saying, the, as I was saying the other day, I expect that within the next few months, the Fed's balance sheet is going to jump from, I think it's somewhere at 7.1, 7.2 trillion at the moment. I think it's going to jump to 10 uh, within... Incredible you know, within a few days uh, after we get the new stimulus yeah. uh, getting signed. Incredible numbers. Um, and the last thing uh, market-wise for people who follow the Turkish lira, uh, they hiked, what was it, 475 base points, uh, which is uh, basically they're trying to control the, the, the steep losses that the lira has That's been That's the way having. to do it. <laughs> and yep. to be honest... We're through a bear flag. I, I, I talked about that the other day. I said that there are two levels of resistance that we, we, we should see the USD Turkish Lira turn lower. The first one was at 780. The second one was here at 797, 798. We got rejected from the first one. Textbook consolidation after a sharp move lower. Uh, next stop, I think, is a very key level at 720 something. Let's say 723. Indeed, yes. And DJ's, uh, I think, has been short, right? And looking for 725. Well done. Well done on that. Yeah, I, I um, think we'll get it. I, I, we're going to go there. <clears throat> yep. Okay. Uh, that's that's about it for me. So uh, you have 10 minutes to show whatever else you need to show. 
Okay, perfect. So you you already mentioned Stelio that we're seeing a rather sharp move lower in uh, gold and silver. Now, from a technical perspective, you know that changes absolutely nothing. Gold still consolidating within this uh, triangle. Uh, same thing with silver, it's just a symmetrical triangle in this case. Uh, support areas, $23 for um, silver and eighteen twenty-five dollars uh, for gold. So, you know, nothing really that changes fundamentally. As I've said, you know, getting lower prices is going to be a gift. Um, so, you know, let's see if we can uh, actually hit uh, the bids um, at these levels, because be sure about it, there are bids waiting to be hit at these levels. There's no question about it. Now, another thing I mentioned yesterday is that from a risk reward perspective, cable looked very nice to the short side. Once again, got rejected from the exact same area. This channel is holding. So, uh, you know, just wanted to mention this um, because it seems to be working out in the short term. Um, nothing has significantly changed since yesterday. Yes, we did have uh, towards the end of the day uh, risk souring. And of course, that you know uh, pulled with it, um, you know the rest of the risk assets, you know even commodity currencies. Of course, here's the Aussie, here's the Kiwi. Kiwi in the short term chart, like the four hour chart, quite an interesting formation here. Is this an ascending wedge? Might be. Uh, you know, we need to wait a little bit and see what's going to happen today. Um, so. Nice luck. Uh, so, yeah, uh, RSA divergence as well, as you see here, yeah. uh, Dale. Um, so I do think that we might see a little bit more weakness first. But keep in mind that if we go on the four-hour chart, both on the S&P and the DAX, for example, if you want to have the major European index as well, you'll see that despite the pullback, I mean, a very clear possible interpretation is that these are triangles, right? Yeah. Here's the DAX, here's the S&P. So I have to say that, you know, you should taper your expectations having to do with more downside because, you know, we haven't even broken down uh, in the short-term charts yet, right? I yeah. mean, we have support here at 335, let's say 30 in, in the case of the S&P and in the case of the DAX, it's... Uh, just below 13. Uh, All right, thousand. look how much uglier NASDAQ looks compared to DAX. And uh, yes, yeah, and you know, I think that's because the dollar has been soft. Keep in mind, though, Dale, that yeah. in the, the a little bit bigger picture in the NASDAQ is also a triangle, right? You can see it here. So, oh, yeah, okay. in the very short term, it looks like we're breaking down from this yeah. corrective rebound, and it looks like we might want to get another leg lower. But all that is still going to be within the context of a triangle. Yeah, I'll take. Uh, I'll take eleven thousand five hundred. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we might easily move towards eleven thousand one hundred to this trend line uh, yeah. support. Yeah, yeah. I totally I agree with you. See, uh, on the weekly, um, ten thousand has been possible. I think we have to be very, very careful with uh, downside expectations. Uh, I've already explained the reason. Uh, there's a lot more stimulus coming. Of course, nobody says that we can't move somewhat lower until we get that. Uh, but I, I think, think that that's the... how we get that. So the Fed charges in while that's going in on in December with their next move and possibly even Congress in a lame duck. I don't think something. it's easy. It's really easy for the Fed to move until they pass the fiscal stimulus deal because the Fed knows that it will immediately need to move once they do that because these bonds need to be bought by somebody. And guess who's, who's that somebody going to be? Yeah, that's true. If you unleash another two, a minimum two trillion that the deal is going to be, right? Yeah. Um, of bonds within a matter of weeks in the market, who's going to absorb that supply? Yeah. All of it, the Fed, trust me about it. And if yeah. not all of it, like, I don't know, 80, 90% of it. Um, so the Fed is waiting. Uh, is waiting for Congress, in essence. Um, now, having to do with crude oil, you know, despite having seen this move lower, crude oil is, you know, 
unfazed, completely unfazed. Yeah. Uh, anyway, look at it. I think that in the short term we might, you know, continue consolidating or pull back a little bit. But, you know, I th- I think that crude is eventually going to break higher, right? Uh, natural gas approaching this horizontal support resist, uh, support resistance area and testing the channels trend line support once again. So an interesting level here for natural gas. I'm paying close attention to it. Um, by by the way. Um, who do we have today, uh, Dale? Dale. Another thing I wanted to show is platinum. Despite what's happening and the pullback in gold and silver, look at platinum here. Platinum is actually attempting to break higher. And that's quite an important uh, move, in my opinion. Keep in mind that platinum is extremely depressed having to do with prices, right? It's been battered down during the past several years. And it's showing, again, some signs of life. And I find it very interesting that, you know, despite the rest of the metals being under pressure, it wants to break higher. So this is another thing I'm paying attention to. Um, Palladium. Consolidation after sharp move lower, I think there is a chance that we, we're going to get resolved to the downside in the very short term, right? Something like that. So paying attention to that as well. Uh, let me go through some of your questions because we have very few minutes. So let's see. Both Moderna, Short and Pfizer buy on the uh, candidate are so-called mRNA vaccines, a brand new technology they aren't made with the coronavirus itself, meaning there's no chance anyone could catch it from the shots. Uh, instead, the vaccine contains a piece of genetic code that trains the immune system to recognize the spike protein. Yes, on the other hand, I've heard, um, you know, this is obviously cloned mRNA, right? You can't get millions and millions of doses of uh, mRNA um, you know, from original sources. So there is a lot of um, discussion about, uh, you know, what uh, cloned mRNA can actually do to your body having to do with mutations or whatever. There is some debate about it. So it opens up other, um, Dimitri, other, um, you know, questions having to do with potential side effects. So yes, you're right about that. Uh, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be safe on, you know, on all respects. Uh, time will tell, as always. Uh, that's why, you know, under normal circumstances, vaccines go under very vigorous and long-term tests, which in this case, we don't have the ability to do, right? Yeah. Um, Steve, you want to look at the, uh, someone's asking for euro pound. And then, absolutely. Uh, and euro then pound still... It held where it had to. Yeah, yes, euro pound time. still consolidating here, I think that it really wants to eventually Go break up. higher. Yeah, but, you, you know, could. instead of, jump, know. Instead of jumping the gun, we have right. this beautiful channel. Wait for uh, 90. Yeah, wait for, uh, what is it, 90, 20? 30. Some, yeah, yeah, 20, 30 yeah. to break out. Once that happens, I, I think that, you know, uh, we're on our way to 93, 94 cents. Yeah, uh, I think that's going to be a nice trade, but we, we clearly yeah. need to, to remain a little bit more patient here, right? Now, s- since we are at it, still paying close attention to Euro Aussie. Look at it, scraping the bottom here at this ascending channel, slightly ascending channel. Looks like eventually it wants to break lower, uh, but that doesn't mean that it has to happen from here, right? I mean, we, we might again see a rebound uh, within this channel before we eventually uh, break lower. And here is Hero Kiwi testing the previous lows. Um, looks more bearish in the short term than the uh, Euro But in any case, I think it also wants to uh, move to the downside. Um, is your guest here? Yes. OK, perfect. Enjoy the interview. All right, Steve. Thank you very much, Steve. Volgi. Nargis, welcome back.
Hi, Nargis. Welcome back to FACE. How are you? She still Calling needs double. to unmute. Yeah. Calling Hi, double good morning, o. Dale. There's good morning, 007. Morning. How are you? Okay. Nice to hear your voice, <coughs> Nargis. How, how's it going with you? Uh, doing good, actually. Yeah, it's okay. it's getting cold in the Bay Area, cold and rainy, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of people leaving uh, San Francisco, a lot of people leaving California. Have you yeah, noticed it's, that it's quieter in San Francisco? Yes, that's what I heard, that it's like a ghost town. Nobody's yeah. out there on the streets and... Uh, Nothing. It's, it's. I think it's gotten affected a lot. Yeah. Most people were uh, mostly like weekly or daily earners, uh, other than the corporations, of course. But you know, right. economy gets affected. So like this, so people need to. Yeah. Earn. Yeah, we're fortunate. We could, unless they're all learning how to trade now. Uh, I know. Do you want? Do you want to share your yes. screen? <clears throat> I'll do that. Okay. Mm, uh, desktop. Uh, this one, right? Huh? Yeah, this one. The, right? uh, I don't see anything yet. There, here it goes. There uh, you go. Okay. Do you see okay. this uh, uh, ES two hour chart or? Yes, I do. Okay. Okay. Good. Oh, then the right screen. Oh. Okay, and yeah, and there's that uh, megaphone, famous yeah. megaphone. So, um, yesterday was kind of, uh, I think, an important day if we get follow through and. Uh, I'm wondering what you're thinking. Uh, do we need to close back inside this megaphone to activate the formation? Uh, yes, actually, Dale, uh, it does look like this because so far it is holding this uh, yeah. top line. And uh, the way I look at I, I, the things uh, I look at it is, uh, you know, this ES, this one single candle went like more than 100 points, right? That uh, that vaccine night when that vaccine thing Pfizer. Uh, got yeah they got too much extended overbought and everything uh, es didn't had any more space to go up so the natural reaction was to come down come down it went back retested but did not take out the high or went near it as well some right. it did some 80 percent 80 percent retracement and it's down so also what was happening before uh, this candle even came in was XPX was already extended, uh, you know? So yeah. when I say that price need to recycle, that means everything needs to come down to 55 EMA sooner or later, especially the smaller time frames, right? Okay. But that that on the RTH sessions, XPX pi had not happened. So currently that's happening now uh, with ES leading in the sense because it trades 24 uh, hours. Uh, so that has, a more faster movement than the RTH sessions. So, uh, I mean, SPY and XPX. So this came on support at four hour. And since then it is holding that 53 area, 53, 54. So if we okay. hold that, then it's possible we may go again up for a retest somewhere around late 3500s, um, 94, 95, 3601. Okay. Uh, yeah, and okay. then uh, if this has more downside, then that would be a f that that area should be a failure area for it to come down. Okay, yeah. Or so uh, or maybe or if uh, thirty five fifteen this this area here somewhere here yeah. gets violated and we close weekly below this, then we know okay we are we have far more, further more downside. But as far as since as last time I had talked, thirty two forty nine is the price cycle. A breakout because it completed those 10 cycles. Uh, so as long as we are above that, this still has bullishness to push up, push up towards that, uh, towards that 3845, this, this, this number, it almost okay. did 3700, right? It did 3668 mm -hmm. less. So almost, almost, I mean, yeah, four points less, but mm -hmm. yeah. So, okay. so what I was seeing here something which you see i, I drew this mm -hmm. uh, is from here to here i just projected a hundred percent from from here to here is i think it's somewhere 1200 points um, mm -hmm. okay yeah, yeah some 1200 so yeah some 
1200 points so this this gives that 4500 target okay so earlier we were talking that you know uh, the 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 original target is 4500 or 44 i had 4489 approximately 4500 yeah. so yeah so and you also mentioned that a lot of folks in the market are projecting 4500 so yeah this downside projects uh, 4500 as well 100% of this okay so here's my narrative i think we're going there but I but, think we could have a 15 to 20 percent uh, washout, shakeout before that. So I'm curious where you have your red lines, uh, those two red lines where they come in and that moving average, 3200 ish. Yeah. This this is uh, 55 EMA. So uh, okay. both times XPX, uh, you know, bounce, bounced off 21 day. Uh -huh. And and this has cashed up a little bit too, and it's getting towards that twenty one day. So if okay. it has to fall, then it it earlier um, uh, I was saying that you know uh, this thirty one uh, thirty seven was my price cycle number, and I wanted it to come down to there because that would yeah. relieve a lot of pressure of you know this right. back and forth uh, uh, that there was no clean movements right. Uh -huh. So but it did not. Uh, come it was you know 3249 it held the price cycle uh, the last fall uh, when it fell down so right uh, I'm, I'm thinking now now this is catching up to the 3137 area a little bit more now it is 3190 so so this kind of is making a conference so I don't know if this comes down so we'll know if this this 30 again 34 32 or 32 49 area right this green line is held or not mm -hmm. uh, if it is not then we know uh, this is coming down yeah, on a weekly basis okay. it closes below this then it flushes right down to here right. somewhere Where, here. where's that uh, bottom the the next line underneath it come in this one 900 yeah this okay. one yeah. Uh, yeah 20 somewhere 29 ish 20, yeah below 3000 is that an important line to you? Because that this is be just I've joined the lows uh, here. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, so I'm assuming that uh, uh, you know if at, at the first cut price should find support if it want or at least like a bounce. Uh, so getting oversold on daily or something. So kind of comes here, bounce it, come down, bounces, come down, bounces. Right. Okay. Yeah. So like nice like a staircase, but you know the these things. If it starts to fall, it'll do just one big candle. <laughs> you know that the way these <laughs> things are going down, one big candle and you're done. Two hundred points, and yeah. or hundred points up. So uh, you can't say that. That would be a natural movement. Uh, you know, as it yeah. used to happen in the good old days. Yes. But uh, <laughs> there are yeah. no more good old days. Yeah, they, they're they're good. We'll look at. Uh, do you do you feel I, I know that what I'm worried about? That we'll look back at these days being in lockdown is a good old days. Anyway, uh, uh, so that's a megaphone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, OK, there's NASDAQ. So yeah, so uh, NASDAQ, same 100 percent projection. It come down, come to systems 12,700 ish. Um, yeah. This almost did that. This was 12,400 yeah. something, less of 250, 300 points. So this almost did that 100%. Uh, then now if it wants to fire, so I, I don't know if it wants to do actually this and touch this, but it's possible that uh, that's why it, this QQs have been lagging a lot. A lot. Because, yeah, yeah uh, because you know it is also at a price you know, surprisingly, all of these things are at some price cycle confluence. Uh, the XPX, uh, I mean, the ES, the uh, NQ. The the interesting thing is, this thing is always the goat. You know, it's. Uh, uh, I found this uh, YM always gives the bigger, better indication of what's happening. So this thing, this guy just completed is. Okay, hold on. I'll show you YM. So see, I, I said that 30,277 will complete its price cycle, uh, 40 cycles, right? So it, right. it touched 30,000 exactly, I think, not a penny more or penny less. Uh, yeah, big round number. A big yeah, round that, number. that was a yes. nice projection. Can I ask you, <clears throat> you know, we were, uh, first we looked at S&Ps, which made new highs on the Pfizer news. And uh, NASDAQ did not, it missed it by just a shade 
makes it look like a double top. Um, that hasn't happened in a while. Normally, NASDAQ was leading it. Do you make anything out of the fact that S&P has made new highs, Dow has made new highs, and really what led this whole advance from the uh, COVID crash were NASDAQ mm. stocks. Um, is, that, is that kind of the canary in the coal mine right here? Is that NASDAQ, which led to the upside, could be the thing that leads to the downside? Uh, that's a possible deal. Look at it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very extended, right? Yeah. See, 10 SMA is right here. And uh, so so what I was say, saying is uh, the comment which I had made here, oops, sorry, is, you know, all techs are very, so all, all techs, if you see Amazon, Apple, uh, yeah. Apple has not done anything. Amazon hasn't done anything. It's just ranging between, I mean, Apple is two to five points and Amazon is between 200 points. It is ranging. Net, Netflix hasn't done anything. Google's the only one that made a new high. Yes. Google went to its cycle 1800. Um, okay. Yeah. So it completed it. So all of your upside calls from the last time we talked, uh, yeah. they all it's, hit. They, yeah, almost hit. Amazon is lagging uh, um, because it is following the ES path. So what I'm doing is I'm just following. Um, if Amazon leads, then then ES follows uh, because they are on the same uh, number path. So it, that also has a 4500 uh, price cycle. Uh, this one also has it. So I'm assuming uh, both of them are just, you know, tagging each other. So in this case, Amazon is leading in its movement. So if it falls down, ES follows, or if it is going up, uh, then, you know, uh, this one also does. So all these charts like Amazon, Apple, they're all like this, you know, the monthly changing here. It's possible that it's waiting for its this 10 day to catch up a little bit more because this distance had increased a lot. Yeah, and on a monthly Amazon basis, looks uh, going to look very negative under 2,900. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. See, it breaks this. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is uh, sub. Yeah. This is twenty nine six. Yeah. Under three thousand. Yeah. 000. Right in there. Yeah. yeah right under this. Uh, yeah. It's uh, yeah. It'll fall to twenty seven fifty. That was my or original target. That if it comes down to twenty seven fifty, uh, I would probably buy it. Uh, depending okay. on the momentum, if, how it's happening in those few days, uh, I would. You know, this would be a good. Uh, unless it breaks this and, you know, wants to go a little bit further, then 2,500 would be my good price to buy. That's what I'm looking for. Ah, okay. That would so, be my, you know, I, yeah, I would, you know, not to use a pun, I would bring in the uh, shopping cart. Yeah, oh, no, yeah, yeah. you shop online with them. So <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I'd have my mouse clicking away. So, yeah. All right. So, so uh, you know, we're kind of in, uh, in agreement. I just think that, um, the NASDAQ and the Fang and MAGA stocks, and you know, I've been tweeting it for a while and we almost broke yeah. down and we had another <laughs> pop on the Pfizer news and we're eroding again. Microsoft as well, you know. This is, 200. this has not, this hasn't gone to the spa day in a long time. Yeah. It has to go wow. some little bit, right? But yeah. even then I think it'll, it'll just 200 ish or so, or maybe just a little under that. 185 one somewhere uh, it, it may bounce back and probably make a new high I, I feel it because it has some pending cycle uh, yeah. to 250 to 300 um, it, it depends okay. if it because it has never broken this 10 day at all on the monthly basis so this parabola has been very very strong um, okay. same goes with uh, you have parabolics on that chart. Do you use them at all? I used to have them on my charts. Yes, I, I do. I do. What do you use them for? You know, I used to use them for uh, where a market might be able to go to, like kind of a target. How do you use them? I, I, I use mostly as an indication to see if how much pressure there is. Okay. Um, uh, in terms of this, because what I see is, especially on monthly, when the stock is coming under a lot of pressure, like, you know, everything yeah. is uh, like bloated, yeah. uh, then, uh, you know, at, at those times, RSI also gets very high, you know. Uh, right. Yeah. So see, like this. So, yeah. 
and, and the parabola goes up, then you know that the daily may be, you know, squeezing a little bit to attract or trap more people. And you you can go and find some short opportunities. Okay. Uh, okay. Jane, already, Jane yeah. is telling us that she uses um, PSAR can be used for reversals under different time frames. See, everyone, yes. you, one tool could be used for multiple purposes. It's yes, yes. Mostly yeah. these are indications to see that, you know, a stock is, and I, for whatever stocks I look at, uh, markets, anything, uh, monthly, weekly, uh, and then multiple time frames on 30 minutes, four hours, two hours daily. So you know where the alignment is coming from and, and you know what, why it is doing that movement basically. It gives an yeah. explanation of what to be expected or uh, you know why it is doing that. So the, the, the price which is coming, just, just before this fall, I was talking to a few of the people who, who closely follow me on the on, in the room is, uh, you know, uh, that whatever Wednesday high we get, we may get a good short opportunity because XPX and SPY hasn't got an opportunity to relax, right? Yeah. So that four hour chart may bring everything down. Uh, and then just, uh, but unfortunately Wednesday, there was no new high. It did not take out the 23.5 or 37 and it just came down. So okay. yeah, okay. that is there. So, right. so, so these charts like this, they, they, you know, like this is SC, some, some stock C limited. What does it do? What does this company do? And was that an IPO? I have no, I have no clue what these folks do, Dale. <laughs> I just brought up the chart because somebody right. asked me, uh, people, you know, how, how on Twitter it is, everyone wants to buy, you know, that, that FOMO yeah. thing is going on and uh, everyone yeah. wants to buy this and all. So they, they, these people had earnings, I think, a couple of days ago. Okay. Uh, so I had uh, tweeted what a about move. it. Yeah, yeah, I tweeted. Oh, uh, yeah, from right this ten dollars to uh, one eighty seven. Yeah. Yeah. So two hundred was its price. Two hundred to two twenty five was its price cycle, and this would be an undercut twenty five percent. So I said it is already reaching that price cycle. So I personally wouldn't buy this. In fact, I would after the earn earnings, I would look to short uh, it, whatever target it reaches to. But it didn't take out this high also, and. And it came down from 187. Uh, I think it did 180 high before, just before the earning. And look at the RSI. This is where the Bitcoin tanked. Uh, yeah. Uh, the previous 19,000. So. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. This was 96 so, uh, plus. I see you have, I see you have uh, gold up there. You have a view. Yeah. You have gold uh, on top. Yes. Because um, we are correcting, and uh, I'm wondering yes. what you. Ah, gold, yes. So gold, uh, GC, where is my GC? Yeah. So we had a target of 2117. Uh, yeah. It just, uh, so this is, uh, this. so this price cycle was done because it, you know, it did, it, it was short of 20, 25 points or 30 yeah. points maybe. So that's uh, very well within that 25% cut. So here, uh, it, it honored it very well. And uh, cu currently it is very extended. I felt, see, again, this was here and the 10 days here. So I think 1800 ish, 1800 would give it a bounce if it doesn't break down. So I'm looking for it to go somewhere around 1800. Best I would want it is uh, somewhere here, seven, 17, late 17s. But I think this 1800 may hold. And okay. then this will also like kind of a bull flag or so. And if it wants to fire high, then then we have uh, the the higher targets back to 20, 2200 to twenty seven zero five. Uh, it will all depend on you know if if it is trading above this ten day on a monthly basis or not. Okay, uh, someone forex gal is asking if you're following um, XLF. The banks. Yeah, XLF. Yes, XLF. You remember Dale last time? Where are you? Oh, oh, this this doesn't go up. Why doesn't this go up? You are your 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 screen is. Hello. How how to remove this this one? What that I am viewing your screen? Do you need to stop huh? a share? You could. Uh, I can drag this. Oh, share. sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. No, your that um, zoom, uh, the zoom bar was coming oh. on top, so I couldn't oh, okay. uh, see okay. the tag. So, XLF, right? So, yeah, 
I had mentioned that uh, it hit 31 and that was a resistance and it pulled back right from there. Uh, now it needs to trade above 31. So it has a shot to 65. Okay. Uh, X, X, I like the way you really organize everything um, in text. Along with yeah, numbers. otherwise, you know, because I deal in numbers and then when you're talking, uh, yeah. I, I would forget, right? Uh, which yeah. number belongs to which. <laughs> yeah, I, I, right. I ask people to remind me what I said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then okay. uh, it gives me a reference also <laughs> if I have to go back and check, right? Yeah. Um, uh, so see this? Yeah. This is very bullish for financials because... Yeah. It is not only, this is a trend reversal in my opinion, because it okay. is monthly is, so this is November, right? So if this right. closes like this above uh, 25, yeah, it then, will. then the train will shoot off. Of course, uh, okay. for daily, I would want it to retest back to, uh, you know, gap, somewhere maybe. here. Yeah, yeah, 25 and maybe fill the gap, get it cleaned up. Uh, and then November closes uh, above 25 and this fires off to, you know, uh, back to back to these highs and probably higher. I so above thirty one, uh, above thirty one or thirty three, this should have a shot to sixty five, in my opinion. Wow, that's going to mean sharply higher yields, I think, higher rates. Mm, yeah, higher rates. Yes. Yes. Possibly. Okay. Anything yeah. else you want to cover? So, uh, th so one of the things was this uh, Zoom, right? Okay, Zoom, yeah. Yeah, so this Zoom thing, uh, this, uh, oh no, not this one. Why did, why did it, what, what is this? <laughs> She's oh, really that's, funny. The, those are ads, huh? Yeah, yeah, um, I, yeah. I, August 17, October 18, October 21. Oh, so no, this one I had projected, right? yeah. So this was when 200, under 200, I had projected the cycle for 400, yeah. that this should hit uh, uh, 400 and it did. And since then it has been, you know, but it did exceed its numbers. And um, uh, it was here, I think, ZM, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so What yeah. a nice three drive to a top there. Yeah, yeah. See, see those it? three move. Yeah, that's yeah. you know, that's the only technique I know. Yes, that that's one of the very. If you can just do that, Dale, that, yeah. uh, on the opposite side as well. Uh, you know, you have some very good setups all the time. All the yeah, time. yeah. Even even on small time frames. Yeah. So works on all of them. Yeah, yeah, all of them. So so this uh, so I'm looking that if this uh, ABC works, then we may head up back to retest here. And uh, if it exceeds the high, then it, this has some higher targets pending. Where did ZM go? Not yours, mine, sorry. Uh, so it needs above 421 to trade consistently to hit, hit this higher target 677. Um, the only one thing which I've been noticing is that uh, when Z ZM is up, the markets are down. So they are acting in reverse. So I'm also using that as an indicator to see uh, where, you know, where okay. what's happening. So two days ago, we took a trade in Zoom to go long. So what that was indicating was that markets are almost, so, so that conference hit uh, well, uh, you know, uh, ES was under pressure and uh, ZM was under pressure. Both were under pressure to, do, to act and they did yesterday. It, I think just at the end, it flew to 425 or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, uh, this thing came down. So yeah, so that's another good indicator to watch for now, uh, because of this uh, virus thing, you know, right. Zoom is, uh, you know, uh, the only God company where, you know, it will be the savior of the work from home thing. <laughs> right. It, so. yeah, well, it, it's been an amazing thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, Nargis, uh, great presentation. Um, you know, I respect, uh, your work and that, you know, what I said in the promo tweet, uh, was, you know, how I see you as a, uh, very hardworking, dedicated tactician Thank and, you. uh, looks like you're, you know, helping some others, 
along the road and um, you know you're planting great seeds and always appreciate you coming in and sharing your views and edifying the face community so uh thank you very much 007 you. you know thank for you coming, much, you know coming out of uh your covert hiding place and going public <laughs> you know a lot of secret agents don't do that so um we all appreciate you here in our community thank you very much Nargis. Thank you, Dale, and you have a, a great day. All of the team members of Forex, thank you for having me, and it's always a pleasure talking to you guys. Yeah, and uh, you could follow Nargis at Nargis007, and uh, I, I, if you want more of her, I guess she's, uh, you know, has a place where you could collaborate with her directly, so uh, she's a follow for sure. Nar that's Nargis007, and remember, everyone, don't just count your pips, count your count blessings. blessings and stay healthy. It sounds like you have a little bit of a, a cold and uh, that you and your family remain untouched until we get through this time of testing. Yeah, thank you, Dale. Thank you and uh, good health to you as well and everyone Thanks. else out there. Thanks for the follow and encouragement. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. There's an artist, one of the hardest working, dedicated tacticians I know. And um, that's a wrap for us today, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow for TGIF. Uh, good hunting. And thank you for hanging out with us. See you, Nargis. Bye, Dale. All right. That's a wrap. Adios, everyone. You're very welcome, Hugo, Laura, Tom, Jorge. See you tomorrow.